Welcome to Electra Online. In this video, we're going to show you how to take the Laplacian of a scalar function in spherical coordinates. Now, here's the equation. The Laplacian of a function is equal to this. Wow, that looks quite messy, and you wonder how in the world can you actually do that? Then here, we have the function defined r times the quantity cosine of theta plus sine theta cosine phi. Well, it's actually not that difficult if we do it one step at a time. And because it's such a long equation, I like to divide it into three different parts. The first part, which is related to r, the second part related to theta, the third part related to phi. And so let's do it in three steps. So what we're going to do is replace f by the function and to take the partial derivative with respect to r. So I'll take the first, so we'll do the r portion of that equation right there. So we have 1 over r squared times a partial with respect to r of r squared times the derivative or the partial derivative of the function with respect to r. So if we do that, then there's the variable, this is the constant, so we simply get the cosine of theta plus the sine of theta times the cosine of phi. And of course, we then multiply times r squared, then we take the partial derivative with respect to r of that. So that becomes the following. So this is equal to 1 over r squared times 2r, because that's the derivative of r squared is 2r. This is just a constant, times the cosine of theta plus the sine of theta cosine phi. And now we multiply this times this, so we get 2 divided by r, so this is 2 over r, times the cosine of theta plus the sine of theta cosine of phi. And so that is the first portion of that Laplacian. All right, so that is the answer when we do this part. Now we're ready to do the second part, the theta part. Again, we write down what we have. We have 1 over r squared times the sine of theta times the partial derivative with respect to theta of the sine of theta times the partial derivative of the function with respect to theta. All right, so r is a constant. We can take that out. So r is a constant. And now what do we have left? So we take the derivative of this with respect to theta would be the minus sine of theta, minus sine of theta, plus the derivative of the sine of theta would be the cosine of theta times the cosine of phi. Cosine of theta times the cosine of phi. All right, now we multiply everything times the sine of theta and we'll see what we get. So we have 1 over r squared sine of theta times the partial derivative with respect to theta of this product. So we get um, r times the minus sine square of theta plus the sine of theta cosine of theta cosine of phi. All right. Now we're ready to take the partial derivative of this with respect to theta. All right, so this is equal to 1 over r squared sine of theta. So what's the derivative? So we can take the r out, so that would be times r, times r, times. The derivative of this would be minus 2 times the sine of theta times the derivative of the sine of theta, which is the cosine of theta plus, this is the constant, so, well, we can just write it out like this, cosine of phi, times, now we have a product, and so we have to use the product rule for that, so it's the first, sine of theta, times the derivative of the cosine, which is the minus sine, plus the second, which is the cosine of theta, times the derivative of the first, which is the cosine of theta, so it becomes cosine square of theta, all right? And I could make this into the sine square of theta. Okay, so minus sine square of theta, get rid of that. Okay, I think I need one more bracket. And now we have to simply simplify that, if we can. 
So we have an R here and we have an R squared there. That simplifies. Hmm. Should we divide the sine of theta into those things right there? Maybe, maybe not. I'm going to leave it like that for now, and we'll maybe do something with it later. Let's see what else we get there, because essentially, we're going to have to combine all these things, and perhaps things will simplify when we combine them. So we have to kind of think ahead a little bit. Uh, for example, if I divide the sine of theta into here, the sine of theta cancel out, I end up with 1 over r times a minus 2 times a cosine of theta, which is what I have over here. I have 2 over r times the cosine of theta. So we may want to simplify things a little bit. Matter of fact, I'm going to do that just, just uh, to start out with. So this times this. So this is equal to minus 2 over r. The sine of theta cancels out times the cosine of theta. And notice this and notice that. So that's the negative of this. So that would cancel out. So I have to think ahead a little bit. And then the second one here, so that would be plus um, 1 over r times, so we have 1 over r, and the sine of theta will cancel out one of those sines of theta, but I have a negative here, so that becomes minus, minus, one of the sines, so I get the cosine of phi times the sine of theta. And then finally, I end up with uh, plus 1 over r sine Theta, I'll just leave it like that for the last one, times the cosine of phi times the cosine square of theta. So I'll leave that like that. So at least I can have some foresight. I see the cosine of phi sine theta, cosine of phi sine theta. So it looks like I may be able to simplify some things in the future. So now let's do part number three, the phi part. And we have one over r squared sine of theta squared, sine squared theta, like this. The double partial derivative, so let's do it one at a time. So the partial derivative with respect to phi of the partial derivative with respect to phi the first time. So r times that, that just drops out. We have r times this, so we end up with r times the sine of theta, those are all constants when we're dealing with phi, times the derivative of the cosine is the minus sine, minus sine of phi, like this. And now we take the partial derivative again of that. So now we end up with one over r squared sine square of theta times the partial derivative of this. Again, we get r times the sine of theta. The derivative of sine of theta is cosine theta, but I still have a minus, minus the cosine, oh, I should say phi, not theta. There we go. And then when we simplify this, notice that this r cancels out that, this sine of theta cancels out that, so we get one over r sine theta times a minus cosine of phi. Hmm, hmm. So let's circle all those and see what we have. So we'll circle that. And we circle this. Now we have to add those three together, right? So the Laplacian is the sum of this one, the sum of this one, and the sum of this one. So we're going to add it all together. So now we can say that the Laplacian of the function is equal to and now let's be smart about it. Let's try to cancel out as much as we can so we don't have to copy too many things. All right. So we have 2 over r cosine of theta. We have minus 2 over r cosine of theta. So we know that this cancels out this. Like that. Okay. Then we have 2 over r times the sine theta cosine phi. And we have minus 1 over r cosine theta sine of phi. So 2 minus 1 gives us 1 left, so we can copy that. So we end up with 1 over r times the sine theta cosine phi, sine theta cosine phi. So sine theta, oh, theta, I forgot my theta, cosine phi. That means that, and I'll use a different color, I eliminated this and 
I eliminated this. Not kind of eliminated, I took this, I have 2 over r times this, minus, oop, minus 1 over r. Did I forget the 2? Oh, wait a minute. I have a 2 sign. No, that came out of there. So 1 over r cosine theta. So I subtracted this from this, ended up with this. All right. What else do I have? I have, let me write it down here. We have a plus cosine theta, oh no, cosine phi, cosine phi, cosine square of theta divided by r sine theta. And then over here, I have minus the cosine of phi divided by r sine theta. Okay, so continuing on, notice I can factor out a cosine of phi there and an r sine theta. So I end up with a 1 over r times the sine of theta cosine phi subtract out or factor out plus a cosine of phi over r sine theta times what I have left, a cosine square of theta minus 1. Hmm, yes, because we have the cosine square of theta plus the sine square of theta equals 1. So that's the minus sine square of theta, right? So the Laplacian of f is equal to 1 over r times the sine of theta cosine of phi plus the cosine of phi over r sine of theta times a minus sine square of theta. And then, of course, this will cancel out one of those. And now we have 1 over r sine of theta cosine of phi minus 1 over r. Uh, let's write it the same order sine of theta cosine of phi and look at that they're exactly the same so this is actually equal to zero okay well that's the answer it's not so much that the answer what's important i think it's the methodology so when you see a scalar function and then you want to take the laplacian of that which looks like this you simply want to see an example of how to go through the process of taking all those parcels, multiplying things, and then in the end, it turns out the whole thing adds up to zero. And that is how we take the Laplacian in spherical coordinates. Remember this? I did not Laplacian. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were giving functions, not actual physics. <laughs> you needed a uh, mathematician. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. Laplace is like the algebra two of basic physics. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's something you it comes in handy later on when you do E and M at the more advanced oh, level. Like derivatives in basic physics. Yeah. <laughs>